Alrighty then. Um, I would like to talk about how the mind works. Um, uh, do you know anything called a Fourier transformer? Well, it's like a mathematical thing inside your television. And what it does is um, it transforms signals flying through the air into an image on your television. Um, I'm not talking about cable, I'm talking about the antenna on top. Um, and it used to be this way like in the 60s and 70s. Um, so when you're watching a show on television um, and you're using your antenna, um, you don't see um, scenes of Seinfeld or you don't see si uh, scenes of Scrubs or any television show flying over your head. Um, you, it's basically a frequency, it's a waveform and, and then your television through its antennas picks up those waveforms and translates that through something called a Fourier transformer and turns it into an image on your television. Well that's how your mind works. See, our bodies are kind of like the hardware. They're kind of like a, a, well, our mind is like a television set almost. And our bodies are like these very sophisticated bio, um, biological, biochemical um, computers. And so, you know, it's, it's very, very sophisticated. And so how the mind works is what you see isn't your reality. What you're seeing around you is just a, a, um, sort of you're, you're, you're picking up these signals and you're transforming it into your reality so what you're looking at around you is basically you're, you're, what you're seeing is um, signals that you are transforming interpreting into your mind and you are seeing that um, uh, <clears throat> the eyes cannot see what the mind has not already seen so if, if your mind cannot perceive it first, if your mind, if it's not available in your mind as a reality, then it won't, it won't, you won't see it through your eyes. Because see, your eyes captures light and it captures um, information, of course. And it all, um, I'd like to tell you that your eyes also beam information out. It's a window to your souls. But anyways, um, you know the image is backwards, and then it turns gets turns upright through the through the um, optical whatever nerves, and then it goes to the back to the cerebral cortex and the occipital cor cortex and the occipital lobes and the you know, um, and then th at the back of your head is where you actually see the image. It's kind of like a camera. See, it's like a camera and. And in, in the back of the, the mind, the back of your head, the, the brain, there you see the image. That's where the image is actually um, there. So you're not really seeing it through your eyes. It's basically the, the, the electrical signals inside your brain. So if you could just imagine your brain works like a Fourier transformer. It works like the television set. It works like um, how your television set works. And then you could also look at it almost like um, a CD player too, where the laser hits the part of the CD, and that, you know, that light hits that part of the CD, and then it it becomes your reality. It becomes what you see on your screen. And the same way our brain works is like a television set or a CD player or a DVD player. Um, you know, w w the light hits a certain part of the reality spectrum, and it. Um, becomes your reality. So what you're seeing outside, what you're seeing all around you are just frequencies and you're interpreting those frequencies to be real. And hey, I don't blame you because like um, the walls, the floor, um, they're all real. Of course they're all real. But they're they're vibrating at a certain frequency. Like um, if, if, if a singer was to pitch a high tone on her voice and the crystal glass shatters, that's a frequency. Another way to look at frequencies is um, if I, if, if, see the thing is my hand is vibrating at a different frequency as the wall in my house and the table. They're all uh, vibrating at different frequency. My table, the mass of it, um, if you took out all the energy and the force, you would only have the, the entire mass of my entire table, my dinner dining table would be about um, the size of a small pea or a small grain of uh, rice. Um, so basically, if I could just match the frequency of my table, I could 
I could basically run my hands through the table. It'd be like magic. Same thing as electricity and anything else you see around you. It's just a bunch of frequency. So what if you change your frequency? What if like you you are able to you know change that frequency? Maybe you would have a different reality, right? Well, see, this is what a lot of scientists and a lot of um, philosophers and a lot of spiritualists are, are saying is that maybe if you can change that frequency, you can you can have another type of reality and you would be interpreting a different type of reality. And this is true. I've seen this in my life where where that that is true. And so, you know, this is this is happening slowly but surely. And, you know, and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying seeing my reality change, how my feelings and my mind changes. And I just want tell people to tell people that that's how our mind works. Um, you know, there's the hypothalamus. There's a pituitary gland, which, um, you know, um, creates something called DMT, dimethyl um, tryptamine. And it causes these hallucinogenic um, experiences within your mind. And they say that's like the gateway to the soul and that it's their third eye. And in amphibians, they say that it's it's actually a third eye, like it looks like a third eyeball. And um, and the uh, pituitary gland makes uh, certain hormones like melatonin, which, you know, uh, makes you sleep. Um, the pituitary gland also um, is attached to your hypothalamus. They're like your mastery glands. And, um, you know, the Tibetan Buddhists say that um, the third week of, of, um, of conception of a woman's pregnancy is when, when, the, when the pituitary gland starts uh, excreting that hormone, uh, DMT. And that's when the soul actually um, inhabits the body. You know, that's great news for people who don't know when a, a, a unborn child is alive. Well, it seems like, um, and also um, there's a, a professor down in the University of Arizona that has, has, has proven this through his research on DMT as well. Um, the hypothalamus, um, the, central, the central reptilian brain, which is like a very ancient brain, is, is, um, is, um, uh, is responsible for fight, flight, and the, and the sex uh, reflex so it's very primitive it just thinks about those things and once it gets past all of the the mammalian brain activities then you become uh, fight fight or f sex activities and the frontal lobe I think the frontal lobe uh, and the central uh, cortex I think the central cortex and the frontal lobe are the called the gods gods complex gods complex the gods module because it's 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 um you know they uh, some some physicists say that it's where you know god resides and you could do all these crazy things with that um and also there's a kid that invented a tool that um was able to beam um television um um frequencies through uh just attaching a remote control to the frontal cortex frontal lobe of a hu uh, his grandmother's brain um you know, I'd like to say that um, there's a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of press. If you could amplify, if you amplify your emotions and thoughts, you know, onto a certain machine, then you can perhaps uh, um, not talk but think something, and people would would know what you're thinking, which is which is a valuable tool as well. Um, about myself, um, I have my degree in psychology. Um, I've been teaching psychology on different um, subjects. I've been researching different subjects. Um, I am educated. I have done a lot of research on myself uh, for myself. Um, I've um, a lot of cutting edge, um, and um, yeah. So uh, you know, as I go on, I'll, I'll tell you more. Um, so basically, that's how that's how the mind works. That's how the mind works, and you know, the reality is certainly an illusion.